and made the motion that you no longer consider pro or con any ballot initiative. Councilmember McKeon, Overcash, Krenning, Clark, I urge you to reconsider that vote. I think you owe an apology, Councilmember Krenning, to anyone who's lost a loved one to suicide, to that mom who's burying her son who took his life in front of McKee last Friday. I think that bringing this stuff up at midnight <clears throat> is wrong. I think bringing this stuff up when it had no chance to be publicly vetted is wrong. I think it, the bringing this kind of thing up and having the council move on it, vote on it, pass a resolution, don't pass a resolution, or whatever else we choose to do without the public's involvement or public notification of any kind is wrong. The technicalities of how it was done, mm -hmm. but I think it's got more holes than Swiss cheese. Am I correct? Well, let's get into the technicalities of how it was done, John, because now you're implying that this was a midnight raid on the city council. No, and, I said it was. So I the said rules that we have, I would not have me, voted for. Excuse me. The rules we have allow for council business to be called as the last item of business. It's the same tonight if you've looked at your agenda. So the fact that we sit here and belabor through a meeting that starts at 6 o'clock and at five minutes until 12, council business now becomes the agenda item, hardly qualifies, as some have su uh, suggested tonight and as you seem to be suggesting, that this was a lay in the weeds and wait until the midnight hour to adopt a resolution. The purpose of the motion wasn't sinister in any way, as has been suggested by colleagues on this dais. It was so that we could stay out of the fray. We've got a number of important matters to address as a city body, and I don't think that getting into the mix of other political subdivisions issues is something that we should exhaust time on. I'm happy to state my position. I've done it publicly in an email. I do not support the county mental health facility. I would support the school uh, district issue. I think I've mentioned I'll vote for Trump, I'll vote for Donnelly, I'll vote for McKean, I'll vote for Senator Bennett, to the chagrin of some of my Republicans, I suppose. But it, I, I guess I'm curious, who cares? That I do have a background in this area, perhaps more than any of your county commissioners or more than anybody else sitting at this dais. Now, I told you I'd tell you a little history. In 2002, I lost a wife to bipolar disease. That doesn't have anything to do with Larimer County's inability to have a mental health facility. But roll the clock back five years previously when she actually suffered postpartum psychosis, and it absolutely does. Thank God that my family physicians had some idea of what was going on with her mental condition. And when she arrived at the emergency room at McKee Medical Center, which at the time was all we had, and which at the time had no mental health facilities, period. My family physicians treated her, and they treated her by heavily sedating her. And thank God that I had the resources to get her out of Loveland. I had the resources financially, physically, and mentally to pack her off to Denver. <clears throat> it was floated around, and we had a county commissioner calling several of us, asking how we would lean or vote and it became abundantly clear that it would be a divided vote on this council. And that item was pulled from the agenda by the proponent. The county pulled it back. It never came forward for a vote. So several of the, of the commenters tonight have suggested that we need to reverse ourselves. There's nothing to reverse. The county commissioners should reverse themselves, I suppose, and ask that it be put back onto our agenda if you can get your rule of four and get the motion that we're not talking about these things overturned. Why is a council picking up a policy issue that it does not fit within their jurisdiction just to rubber stamp, to look good? So let's decide which ones we're going to vote on before we make some motion like that. I mean, I'm sitting here thinking we probably should make a motion to resist Amendment 69 because I really believe the citizens of Loveland would like to know the council's position and how disastrous this bill can be on our, not only our health care system, but our business structure within the state. 
And maybe they'd like to also know about Amendment 70, state minimum wage. We have a lot of people that work at minimum wage in Loveland, so should we pick that up issue up as well? And I can continue. Let's get down to, oh, Proposition 106, access to medical aid and dying medication. I mean, we have old people in Loveland are dying. Should we take a position on that too? My God, we could take a position on everything that's on the ballot. Now, as an individual counselor to take position, feel free to go ahead, but the citizens will vote on these. We're not restricting their ability to vote. We're not telling them it's a bad idea or a good idea. We, haven't, we, we didn't even have it brought to us because they removed it because they wanted it to be unanimous or none at all. So, see, it's a lot easier to rant about your political issue than it is to have an intellectual discussion about it. So I'm trying to keep us out of that. I'm hoping this is the last night we get into it, but it's council's pleasure district because it is a special taxing district and so you know for us to say that these issues don't impact each other um, is I think not an accurate statement based on the facts in general so. who cares what I think and who frankly sits around waiting for this council to adopt resolutions before they go out and cast their ballot instead what we do is we find ourselves trying to play politics up here and trying to support or not support individual or particular resolutions. And so if for people that want to bring a resolution up and have us adopt it, think that it would be better to have a divided, split decision as opposed to us just staying out of it, I guess we could get back into that business because we've done it twice since I've been on the council. One had to do with fracking and the other had to do with the animal shelter and both times those decisions were split on the fracking issue, it was split right down the political divide, and we used it as a weapon against and for one another. Turn on your microphone, or please. It's more important for your constituents to know how I'm going to vote, or Rich is going to vote, I or will, the council is going to vote. I will bring up how I will vote on a motion, and I voted no on, on the idea that we would no longer endorse. I think it's important for us as, a citizen, as citizens and as leadership members. Well, who are you going to vote for for president? I'm going to vote for Clinton. Do you care? Yeah, well, it's important. Let's so, get, I think what we should do is go through the entire ballot. No. And we should. We I should don't. I get the, to go into a ballot. Let's go down the line and I'll vote. Let your constituents to know exactly how you're going to Have you vote. ever seen me endorse a candidate out in public? No, I don't write letters to the editor on them. Oh, it doesn't matter. All right. Well, jo uh, Leah. So I. Okay. Um, I'll just go ahead and say I'm the one probably being accused of making this more sinister than it may have been. And, okay, I did suggest the other evening that it may have been politically motivated. And I guess my point at this time is it seemed to come very quickly, uh, the procedure I had a problem with. I was It was 11.56 when the procedure was passed or when the motion was passed and seconded. And to Joan's point, you know, there was no time to have proper public comment. And this council and members of this council talk ad nauseum about how we need to be transparent, give the public process. 